Previously on the Traveling Together Journal, we get some fun waves at Playa Popoyo before catching the ferry across Lake Nicaragua to Ometepe Island, where we explored the steep sides of the volcanic mountains and found a variety of unique adventures in a beautiful setting. Then it was back to the mainland for an overlanders meetup and more fun in the sun at another great Nicaraguan beach. We left our campsite at Playa Madeiras yesterday and drove north to Masaya, motivated not by our usual quest for fun and adventure, but by logistical obligation. Our travel visas and temporary vehicle import permit, or TIP, were nearly expired. We decided to use this campsite we had read about in iOverlander app as a jumping off point to go into Managua, the capital city, to file for extensions. This place has been so peaceful. If I was really stressed out, this would be a perfect place to come and just let it all go. And it's been really tranquilo. I've really enjoyed being here. And when we come back, we might be a little stressed out. We used the internet at the campground to do a little research and came up with a plan before heading into the chaotic city. We learned that the customs office would only grant an extension on our tip if we already had the time on our visas. So step one was going to be getting new visas from the immigration office, which happens to be in the dark back corner of this shopping mall. All right, we're at the Metro Central Mall. We're going to try to get our visas renewed. It's 9.20 right now, so let's see how long this takes us. Once we located the office, it was a pretty easy process. They provided us with a form to fill out. Then we got photocopies made of our old tourist visas at this conveniently located photocopy business. Then we just had to wait in line until the official in the office gave us our stamps. All right, that wasn't actually that bad. It's 10.50 and we have our visa stamps and we're gonna go and try to drop off the paperwork to get our tip. All right, we're here at the DGA and this is a process that I don't actually have to do anything. Matt is in there trying to get our vehicle permit and it's a dollar a day, so it's gonna be another 30 bucks. Um, he had to take a slip over to the bank and put the money into the bank account and then comes back with a receipt that he did it before we can get our uh, temporary import permit, the tip. After about two hours, we had our paperwork filed and our fees paid for our tip extension. But the DGA takes a day to process the extension request, so we'd have to come back tomorrow. Nonetheless, we were feeling successful and pleased with how well things were going that morning, so we decided to take care of a few other errands while we were in the city. And that's when our luck ran out. Well, Matt just bumped into somebody's car in a parking lot. That's right, I backed into a parked car and added a stressful situation to our already tiring day in the city. I dented the bumper of the vehicle so I found the owner and showed her what happened. She tried to claim that I also caused this damage on the opposite end of the vehicle even though it was clearly rusted and old and there was no way I could have caused both dents. She wanted me to pay for a new bumper and a new bedside for her truck. I refused offering to pay to fix the dent I had caused she declined my offer, so the police got involved. I was surprised to learn that the legally required auto insurance that we had, and that every police checkpoint that we were stopped at demanded to see proof of, was not asked for in this situation, and in fact was not used at all. The officer explained to me that I had two options. Option one was to reach an agreement with the vehicle owner and pay her. Option two was to surrender my driver's license and wait for a court date to argue my case in front of the judge where I would have to provide a lawyer that could translate for me, a process that he estimated would take two to three months. I opted for option one and continued to haggle with the vehicle owner until we settled on an amount that she said it would cost her to replace her bumper. The police officer wrote out an agreement, witnessed me giving her the money, and then everyone signed it. By the time we finished dealing with this fiasco, it was getting late and we were feeling totally drained, so we made our way back to camp. After the day that we have had, I'm so grateful that like we know where we're gonna go spend the night tonight and that it's such a beautiful, peaceful place because it's definitely what my soul needs right now. After another restful night's sleep at our hilltop camp, we headed back into the city to the office of the DGA, where we waited for an hour and left with a 30-day extension for our tip. From Managua, we headed west to Playa San Diego, following rumors of exceptional tide pools and fun surf. There's typically an issue when we go to the beach towns with there not being any um, actual fresh water. 
There's plenty of water, but it's normally salty. So we tried to fill up our jerry cans at the gas station and they didn't, they didn't have water refill. They just had buckets of water. Um, it is the dry season in Nicaragua, so there's kind of a water issue a lot of times in most towns. So we're driving through this town and we saw, see all these buckets along the side of the road and we're like, I bet you that's for water refill. They'll bring all their buckets to the side of the road. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then this truck will fill them up. So we just stopped on the side of the road and Matt's got our jerry cans and it's getting them filled by the water truck. Well, you know, the nice thing is if we never had gotten water, at least we had plenty of beer. <laughs> uh, gotta stay hydrated. Good morning guys. We are actually just kind of camped next to the road here and then the hostel that we are supposedly kind of camped at is actually just across the street over there. So in order for us to go like hang out and use their Wi-Fi and stuff we end up having to pack everything up because there's no security or anything over here and we're just on the side of the road so we don't want all our stuff stolen. I went for a surf this morning. There's a wave down the beach that supposedly gets pretty good but the conditions just weren't right for it today. So I tried paddling out somewhere else but just ended up kind of freaking myself out. It's like a 200 yard paddle out and there's like all these rips and boils popping up and there's just no visibility in the water so you can't see the bottom what's causing any of the boils or how deep it is or anything. Anyway, uh, got a couple waves, but nothing too spectacular and just came in because I was all freaked out. <laughs> kind of lame, but that's what happens. Feeling unsatisfied with the camping situation and not optimistic that the surf conditions would improve, we decided to move on. I had a few locations picked out on Google Earth that I thought might have rideable waves, so we headed north to take a look. chain of grocery store and we are gonna do a big stock up because we're going to potentially a more rural area and it's not always easy to find like really good fresh stuff so we'd rather just stock up while we know we can find it we have a nice load we got 24 beers and a ton of vegetables a little bit of uh, ground beef and some chicken 
and we spent 1600 Cordoba, um, which is quick math, Matt. I'm not good at quick math. $53. $53 ish. <laughs> um, for pretty much most of the food we're gonna need to eat for the entire week. Yeah, now I'm gonna go to get a fancy coffee that uh, Matt doesn't wanna know. It's like $3.50, so it's kind of expensive. But it's such a nice treat sometimes to get a super fancy cold drink. <laughs> Oh, you think you can? You want to nudge it up a little bit? Yeah, I think actually you can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so close. Oh man. Get in the car. Let's go find waves. From Shenandega, we headed west and continued to explore the coast looking for uncrowded surf. Unfortunately, being on such a long trip and not following any kind of itinerary, we arrived in Nicaragua about two months before the South Pacific storm season begins creating good, consistent swells for this region, and as a result, had little luck finding the ways we were looking for. But we still enjoyed exploring the region. We tried to make the best of the hot, dry weather by taking plenty of siestas, surfing the small beach breaks we found, and reminding ourselves that the dusty parking lots we were camped in were better than the muddy ones that would soon replace them in the rainy season. But eventually we grew weary and decided to return to Messiah to relax and prepare for our visitor who would soon fly into Managua. All right, this place has been awesome. We've been here a week. We've just been chilling out and um, it's been fabulous. This is the first time on our trip where we kind of acknowledged we were having the road weary and that's kind of where you just don't even want to look for anything like cool to go see or you don't cope with the dramas of not finding a good campsite or them not having any water as well as you used to and so we knew it was a good time for us to take a break get off the road for a week so that we can start fresh with our friend Lindsay. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready for adventures? Yeah. Woohoo! Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, our friend Lindsay arrives from Maui and joins our little team for a couple of weeks of adventure in Nicaragua.